All right, we are now joined on the phone by Garrick Jones. Uh, now, his resume is a mile long, but I'm going to try to uh, I'm going to try to <laughs> summarize it a little bit. But uh, you know, currently candidate for Houston Texans GM position, but previously played for the Texans, uh, Jacksonville, Kansas City, Atlanta. Had a stellar career with many teams in the CFL. Uh, he's the commissioner and uh, CEO of the state's developmental football league. Uh, president of Huddle Up Foundation of Houston, the treasurer of uh, the NFL Players Association Houston chapter. I mean, you've got uh, you've got quite the resume, Garrick. I mean, that is uh, that in itself. If I was looking at it, and I was uh, the McNair family, I say he's hired right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's that's a part of the deal. You know, you want somebody that that isn't isn't afraid of the work. Right. You know that 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 can relate to. Uh, practically anybody in the establishment as far as the organization is concerned. And, yep. and my thing is just, hey, it's all about transformational leadership. And, and I think with what I've done and with my body of work, I, I feel like I fit the bill completely. I think I check all the boxes. Oh, you definitely do. And what I really like about you, you, like, even as a player, you, yes, you are a professional athlete, but uh, you came into the NFL with the businessman uh, mindset. Uh, you came in, you were, even even though you were younger than some of the you know, your teammates and stuff, you were mentoring a lot of these players back in the day on, on how to handle themselves, uh, not just on the field, but off to uh, ensure that they've got a future whether it's on or off the field i mean that that in itself is pretty rare in professional sports nowadays yeah i mean like i say the way i came into it i had to think about retirement before i made it to the league just by being undrafted and i didn't have a senior season of college yeah so i had to go the long way yeah <laughs> you know and i had to i had to make the league respect uh, because, you know, a lot of those guys, well, the majority of them said, you'll never make it to the NFL. Right. right? And, and I made it, you know. So, you know, I understood that it, you are a brand within a brand, and it's, and it's about business in the bottom line. Uh, but it's also about being able to to tote the note when it comes down to, to being a player. And, and once I got to the NFL and once I seen how it was structured, uh, that was my on-the-job training. So whether it be talent evaluation, whether it be the business schematics of it, the logistics of games, I studied all of that while I was playing. You know, and a lot of guys really don't do that because they're thinking about the X's and O's, and I get it. Yeah. But I realized that I was going to be a former player far longer than I would be a current player. Uh, so that's why I, I took it upon myself to really learn all the ins and outs and just took it back to that on-the-job training. You know, and I, and I like what you just said. I realized I was going to be a former player longer than I was going to be a current player. Do you see the, uh, I guess, the mindset starting to change in that regard? And, and and I know that you've had a big part in it uh, in dealing with a lot of players, but is that mindset in professional sports starting to change to where uh, these uh, these young men and, uh, you know, even young women in, in their professional right. sports, are they starting to look at the long term nowadays? Um, yes and no, uh, because, you know, when you're young and we've all been young, yeah. you know, we're, we're invincible, you know, and, and when those checks are coming every two weeks, you, you think they're going to come forever. Yeah. And, and it's imperative that you surround yourself with individuals who understand, you know, what's going to be coming next for you so they can help you through any kind of pitfalls that, that, that may come your way. Um, but I think with what I'm bringing to the table and, and the different practices that we placed and implemented in the state's developmental football league yeah it's going to be an emphasis on life after sports because if you can take care of that and and make sure that the the players families are are in business for themselves and doing well financially that frees those players up in regards to having to carry so many people right um financially and and they can focus on the x's and the o's and, and with professional sports we all know that it's not guaranteed you can walk outside or you can get on the field and you can you you're one injury away from not ever being able to play again so we want to assure those athletes that that we have that we're, we're here for them we're here for the long term for them and that we're going to make sure that their family's in a good position as well as them when the game is over so that we can focus on the x's and o's 
and we can we can win these championships and bring the Super Bowl to Houston. That's what it's all about. I'm on the phone with Garrick Jones, a former player of the Texans, among many other teams, and candidate for uh, the GM position for the Houston Texans. Now, uh, you know, you're close. Uh, you know, Mr. McNair, uh, when when you got signed with the Texans, you two right. formed a, a, a really special relationship. And, you know, it, it's uh, tell us a little bit about that because that kind of paved the way for, you know, where you're at nowadays, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Well, yes. Well, the thing that, that it was, when I came in, um, I was just coming from Canada, right? Mm-hmm. So once I went up to Canada, all of the scouts that pretty much told me no, they were there scouting. And, you know, I had a, I had a really good run in Canada, and that was essentially my senior season. Yeah. Uh, so I signed with Kansas City, uh, and then they ended up bringing, you know, some guys in in the draft. So at that particular point, uh, I had beat the guys out in training camp, but it was politics over playing time. Right. Um, and, and, and what happened was when I came back from Canada, man, I worked out for like 14 different teams, and nine of those teams wanted to sign me. Wow. And Houston was one of them. Yeah. Um, and, and when I was released from Kansas City, you know, it, it, on the waiver wire, Houston picked me right up. So once I got to town, um, I had the opportunity to talk to Charlie Cassidy, who was the GM at the time, yeah. and we kind of went through everything. And I got a chance to talk with Mr. McNair, uh, and you know, he just, you know, he he, he kind of praised how I came about, you know, making it to the M- NFL, right? Which was really cool uh, because no general manager, you know, had ever, you know, pulled me to the side and said, "Look, I, I see a-, a grind in you. I see this, and I see that in you." And 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 just to speed up the the the, the situation in regards to this story. Um, I was doing a lot of different things in the communities. Yeah. Um, you know, I, there's a Garrick Jones Day in the city of Houston. You know, yeah. October 25th, 2005, you know, I was awarded a proclamation for all of the nonprofit and philanthropic work that I was doing in the city. But I was practicing and I was going and attending all these galas that Mr. McNair was in. Uh, you know, and he would see me and we'd lock eyes every once in a while. And uh, at one time he, he called me over to the side and asked me a question and said, hey, man, how is it that you're able to perform at a high level on the field, but yet I'm seeing you at all these different functions? And, and I told him, man, you know, with all due respect, Mr. McNair, um, you know, I'm trying to do what you're doing for your family. You know, uh-huh. I'm trying to make sure that my family's good and that when I'm when I'm done and when I'm no longer here, I'm taking care of my family from the grave. So he, he laughed and said, okay. He said, well, I'll tell you what. You know, you won't be able to play football forever, but when you're done – you'll always have a job here with the Texans. And, and I laughed and I said, well, all due respect again, Mr. McNair, you understand my mindset and how it works uh, because I, I am a, a guy that wants to put some things together and, and, be, and have ownership and this, that, and the third. I said, the next time we'll see each other, it, it'll be a partnership. And he laughed and, and you know, and he, he said, man, I love it. I love it. And, and that's kind of the, that was our relationship. Yeah. You know, we would talk in passing and it was, it was a real cool situation, man. I just hate that, you know, I didn't get a chance to get back uh, and talk to him a lot more right. before he passed away. But, yeah. but you know, Cal and Janice, man, they're 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 great people. They're they are great people, and 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 I just look forward to to being able to sit down with them and and, and show them everything that I want to bring to the table and that I am able to bring to the table from the things that I've been doing. Fantastic. You know, I love that story. We're on the phone with Garrick Jones, uh, formerly of the Houston Texans, and like I said, a host of other uh, football teams, uh, commissioner of the state's developmental football league. Uh, you know, and at the beginning I said his resume is super long, but I'm going to stop right there. The state's <laughs> developmental football league. Um, now, why doesn't the NFL – have something like the state's developmental football league to serve as like say a minor league system why isn't the you know, why, you know in baseball you've got single a triple a and you know double right, a right. why isn't the, you know why isn't the nfl more engaged in uh, in working with these athletes not just on the field but uh, also uh, you know helping them build careers off the field well i think w- what has happened is it, it takes a lot of time and preparation. Yeah, it takes a lot of heavy lifting in order to uh, be able to facilitate a league, logistically, uh, just the structure, the curriculums, all those different things. So, everything that the NFL would need, we've already done it. Yeah. So I have yet to present it to the NFL, but that's a part of the platform that I want to bring to the table that will offset the CBA changes in regards to preseasons and and how the rookies and the younger players will develop. Uh, because every year they're going to bring in 90 guys and they got to cut that down to 53 men. So once you cut those guys, you don't know where they go. Uh, but with our system, 
uh, that can run congruent with the NFL, you now these teams can now allocate those guys to the teams that are running congruent with them. And from my ties with the NFLPA and just my ties in sports, period, all of these guys that want to scout, that want to coach, that have been there, done that in the NFL, CFL, these guys will be coaching these athletes and mentoring them. So it's a true developmental system because now these refs that need the reps, your upper management, you know, interns, yeah. they now can get the reps. I mean, it just makes sense. So those are the things that I'm going to bring to the table when I sit down with the organization. And then hopefully, you know, we can take it to the NFL and, and, and the teams can vote on it. And, and it's, it now is a situation where um, all the heavy lifting is done. We're, we're the facelift that's needed uh, because they're going to actually now put these players in a position to win. Even though everybody may not play in the NFL, they're now able to take care of their families, and that's what this thing is about. That's what it's all about. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, your, your list of philanthropic work uh, speaks for itself, but uh, just what you were saying right there with, uh, you know, with the state's developmental football league, it's all about helping. It's all about lending, you know, sticking out that helping hand for others, not just the players, but, you know, from uh, the executive office to the interns and everything. And that's what, right. I, that's what I really, really respect respect the hell out of you for because you know we need we need more leaders in our community that uh, aren't just going to lead uh, from behind the desk they're going to roll up their sleeves <laughs> they're going to get out there in the community get the you know dirt under their fingernails and uh, yes, make sir. make the real changes and and you know and it's because of that that you've actually got uh, you know Houston has proclaimed a Garrick Jones day so you know I think that's kick ass now uh, we're on the phone with Garrick Jones candidate for Houston Texans uh, GM position now let's uh, let's talk about the current state of the Texans, man. As a diehard Texans fan, um, it, it was painful to see Bill O'Brien's tenure last as long as it did. But we got him in the rearview mirror. Uh, who would you hire when you become GM of the Texans? Who would you hire as head coach? Well, for me, uh, I would hire a head coach that can actually. Um, work with me in our culture yeah. because realistically before we can really get down to the, the coaches and those types of things, the candidates, the culture has to change. Yes. It has to be a win now culture. It has to be a culture that, that is going to breed and ooze enthusiasm, ambition, uh, everything that, that, that personifies me. Right. Right. And then from there, once I, I'm, I'm able to sit down with the coach and, and really get that philosophy and, 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 and really establish that trust um, then from there, you know, we can go down the list of all the guys that are top ten coaches. Right, right. Um, and you know, and everybody knows Eric being I mean, he he's yeah. a great coach. Uh, because the thing about it is, players play a lot harder for former players. Yeah, they do because they respect them and they understand it. And those are the types of people that I want to bring to the table that can that that we can actually put some major things into play and, yeah. and in motion. Um, so well, my thing would just be the I have a list of coaches that that I would want to sit down with, and that I would want to get with and, and go through things with, um, and just see if they fit that culture. Because if they don't fit the culture, you know we're wasting time. Yeah, and, and we don't have we don't have that luxury, especially for somebody like myself. The objective of this thing is to get in, and we have to have a mentality that isn't we're going to rebuild, we're going to totally blow everything up. We're going to take the guys that we have, we're going to talk with them. We're going to look at restructuring contracts. We're going to set the dynamic and the precedent for a Super Bowl and championship mindset. Amen. And if they're not able to do that, then that's when we, we, we have to part ways and, and now bring other guys in and just make a few tweaks. And once you change that culture, you change the whole entire perspective of that organization. It's what it's all about. It starts from within. It uh, You know, the culture, I'm glad you said that because culture is what it is all about. It doesn't matter who you have coaching. If the culture isn't, uh, if the culture isn't consistent throughout the locker room in the front office, then it's right. just not going to work. Now, you're talking about you know you're talking about uh, different players and if we have to say goodbye to some then so be it or whatever but uh you're honest what was your first reaction when you learned about the d-hop trade oh that was hard man because I i've been traded before yeah you know uh and, and i can speak from firsthand accounts how that how that hurts a team how hey, you got to look at it from a family from a family uh perspective yeah um Think about, you know, a family that has a wife, a husband, a, uh, you know, your kids, uh, and all of a sudden, one of your children or even your wife is, is traded away, and then they replace her with another, another uh, stand-in. 
Right. You know, now you have to operate and you have to do everything that you were already doing, but you're still expected to operate, you know, at a high level when you've just broken up a family. And if there's no clear and concise direction as to why or explanations as to why that anybody can really buy into, that's an organizational situation. So that's an organizational leader. Yeah. Um, and, and But you have to be and have to have transformational leaders in, 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 in upper management that can really get the get the story across, really get the vision across. That way everybody buys into it and they know and understand what their role is in. The D hot trade is, is a hard one that, you know, it's going to be hard for the organization to bounce back from. He's a once in a lifetime individual. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, un, it is, it is, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, um, but we can recover. Uh, but you know, he's one of those guys that, man, that, that, that hurt the city. And the city city is still hurting from that one. Oh yeah, myself included. Yeah, because he was a good guy. Yeah, he was a good guy. Yeah, that uh, that that was one of those that as soon as I saw that come through on ESPN, uh, you know, I I just went went out back, brought a thirty pack of Bud Light with me and <laughs> drank myself into oblivion and, and cried. <laughs> oh man, I, I know it, man. I think I think everybody across the city and. I mean, just the nation, man. Yeah. It, it was it was rough, man. Yeah. It was that was a hard one, man. <laughs> it was just no understanding, like what is going on to not get any value, um, and that that's the thing, man. It, yeah. That was a personal situation, and and anytime you have absolute power in an organization, that breeds absolute corruption. That's exactly right. And we can right. never let that happen again. Amen to that. Hey, it's Garrick Jones. He's candidate for the Houston Texans GM position, and he's got my vote for damn sure. And I know that you guys listening right now are going to be behind him as well. You can find him on uh, all the social media platforms and definitely support his quest to be the next GM of the Texans. And, uh, man, I can't thank you enough for joining us today. This is uh, – I knew I was going to get some good uh, good conversation with you, but this has been uh, really enlightening in, in hearing a lot of the business side behind all this and and uh, your experiences coming up through the league and everything it's been a man been a great talk man i appreciate you no i appreciate you for for giving me the opportunity to be in your space and on this platform and and just believing in me you know oh. with that belief we, we can make anything happen and that's what this thing is about that's what it's all about next year it's going to be a big year for the texans mr jones i appreciate you taking the time today i hope you have a wonderful one all right you too man thank you so much thanks